Um, today we're going to be talking about the new Holy Ghost movie. And uh, we're here to uh, let you know that this Holy Spirit, uh, we believe, is not the Holy Spirit of the Scriptures that's portrayed in this movie. Um, it's actually uh, the spirit of the age. And uh, the spirit of the age is also known as the zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. So, Sandy, you want to uh, oh, mention yeah. what the zeitgeist is? Well, um, the zeitgeist is basically defined as the spirit of the age or spirit of the time. And it particularly refers to um, whatever is the prevailing thought or it's called paradigm or worldview of a particular time. For instance, uh, many decades ago it was modernism. Today it's postmodernism. And many of these movements are actually postmodern in that they're, rel uh, they're relativists. They think that uh, you know, truth is transitory, that it, that it can mean one thing to one person and one to another. You know, your truth may, may not be my truth, etc. cetera. Um, it also can refer to uh, basically prevailing thought in the churches, which today uh, turns out to be emerging church, as well as this whole uh, revivalist uh, prophetic movement, the new apostolic movement, uh, have basically taken over what used to be called evangelicalism. You can't really even use that term anymore. Um, there's another word, though, that is also used along with the zeitgeist, and it's called Weltgeist, which means world spirit. Or, uh, you know, Ephesians 2.2 2 talks about the spirit of the power of the air. It says, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Uh, many people are following this spirit. Uh, they, all, they all get together and um, they are very much empowered by this spirit. We saw this spirit at a globalist meeting uh, in a church downtown Honolulu. And um, everybody was really together on one page. And we're talking about supposed Christians along with Shinto and uh, Buddhists, Hindus, etc. So... Uh, this can also has also invaded the church, the Weltgeist. Second Corinthians four four is an important verse. It says, "The God of this age, who, who's the God of this age? Unfortunately, <laughs> it's the devil, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of God, who is the image of God. Unbelievers are blinded; they cannot, they don't, they can't see the truth." Unfortunately, however, <laughs> the God of this age has also blinded many people who call themselves Christians. Whether or not they're truly born again is a question that's only for God to answer. But I think a lot of people have also wandered away from the faith. Galatians 1.4 says, Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. Jesus Christ has rescued us from this evil age, which is the age of the Weltgeist. And finally, 1 John 4, 3, But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you've heard is coming and is now already in the world. It's interesting that John was saying that the spirit of Antichrist was already in the world. Right. And it's been building. It's some kind of spirit that, the, that, that uh, Satan controls and or is him. I don't know, I don't know how it works. But unfortunately, it's been allowed into the churches through occult practices such as Reiki and, and slain in the spirit. And we'll be talking about that in this, in this uh, because they're doing that in this movie. And it's interesting, in the Holy Ghost movie, um, uh, R.T. Kendall had a quote. Uh, we had the deluxe edition, and he had a quote that we're going to play for you right now. Um, I, I just, it, it kind of threw up a red flag to me because... Um, R.T. Kendall actually uh, says, um, why didn't you ask me about Toronto Blessing? Why didn't you ask me about Toronto? So let's play that clip now. This, see, he got this, Toronto sent him. You didn't ask me a thing about Toronto and why I believe in it. Okay, so R.T. Kendall even asked him the question and, and I'm sure uh, the director's answer would be, well, the Holy Spirit didn't want us, their Holy Spirit would not want us to go there, whatever. But most of the folks portrayed in this film are from the Browns, uh, supported the Brownsville, uh, Toronto, uh, Lakeland. Uh, they supported Todd Bentley. 
um, all these, uh, uh, you know, revivals that uh, uh, where the manifestations actually interrupted the preaching yeah. of the Word of God. And that's what's sorely missing in this film, Sandy, right. is the preaching of the Word of God. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it actually opens up with Will Hart and Jamie Galloway performing Ray Kay. One of the first people we met was a 21-year-old kid who admitted that he'd been haunted by dark spirits ever since he and his friends slept in a graveyard. According to us, we agree that we, we fucked each other over mm. and now we're haunted mm. just because we slept in a cemetery and now we're in different continents and we're all experiencing stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. How would you like that to leave you and never come back? In a way, it'd be, it would be sick because she hates the fact that I have stuff that what? follows me around the house. And I could do that for you. Could you? Yes. How so? Uh, I, I, I was a kid that had night terrors. So bad I had to be hospitalized. Damn, son. Yeah, right. and, uh, and then I came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He freed me and he gave me this special power to help other people be free. Mm -hmm. So I could take that away. What religion? Just Christian, no religion. Just Christian. Yep. Christian in the Mormon state, huh? <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> Ironic. OK, put your hand out. Watch. Holy Spirit, I want you to touch my friend. Show him you're really real and break him free from all the haunting spirits that have been assigned to his life. You feel that? Watch. Feel something in my hand. Double it. Double it. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Holy Ghost, I ask you to send your power all the way up his arm as a sign of your love. Thanks, Jesus. Feel that? Oh, uh, my armpit's cold all of a sudden. Yeah, watch, double it. Double it. More. Now, Lord, show him it's not my power, but it's your power. From the top of his head down the soles of his feet, let that power go through his body right now. You feel that? It's weird, man. I don't know what to tell you right now. Isn't that crazy? That feels weird. Now watch. Put put your drink down. Put your drink down. Put your other hand out. Watch. Because this is a moment. This is a moment that... I feel like we're about to play that game. No, <laughs> no, no. Watch. Double it, Lord. More. That stuff is going to come off your life. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. More, Lord. You feel that? That is weird, dude. Isn't that crazy? That's... Now I'm gonna put my hand, my finger, on your in the middle of your palm, and power is gonna go through your body. It's not my power. Lord, show them that it's not my power, it's not my magic, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, thanks, Lord. Man, what do you think about that? I don't know what to tell you right now, dude. My, I feel weird. Yeah, watch, double it so much you can no, barely no stand joke. up. My nipples got hard. Now, a, a lot uh, during this film, it, it, it's the usual stunts, the leg pulling stunt, which we'll show a clip of later um, that uh, Todd White does at a, uh, at a corn concert to an individual, to an atheist, um, who he says he's healing and the leg pulling trick. But some of it is true occult practice. Um, so at the, uh, the very start of this, uh, around the four minute mark or so, um, Will Hart and Jamie Galloway are performing uh, Reiki. And if you're, not in, if you're not familiar with that practice, uh, Reiki is noted as a spiritual practice developed in uh, 1922 by Japanese Buddhist, which has been adapted by various teachers of vary, uh, varying traditions. It uses a, a technique Commonly, uh, commonly called palm heal healing or hands, hands-on healing as a form of alternative medicine and is somewhat classified as oriental me medicine by some professional uh, physical body, uh, 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 professional medical bodies. Through the use of this technique, practitioners believe that they are transferring, now listen to this, they believe they are transferring universal energy in the form of ki or G, uh, which is used in karate uh, uh, also, uh, through the palms, which they allow for, uh, uh, for self-healing in a state of e equilibrium. Re uh, Reiki, uh, Reiki is a subtle energy. It's different than electricity or chemical energy or other kinds of physical energy. Reiki energy comes from a higher source. Now we're gonna question during this, 
what higher source that's coming from, which exists on a higher dimension than the physical world we are familiar with. Now, these folks in this movie would say it comes from the Holy Spirit, but it's almost like the Holy Spirit is at their command. You know, they're, they're channeling energy into these folks. And, and, and we'll find during this movie um, that they also have to talk people into their healing, which is uh, an old trick. Remember when the Jesus, the apostles, the, the true disciples of Christ healed somebody, they were healed instantly. And it didn't, they didn't gradually take it. Um, uh, they, we're going to play a clip, another clip right now. Um, uh, this uh, gentleman with a, a blue shirt, they're actually um, in Salt Lake City. And uh, they, they, cut, they talk this guy uh, into his healing. And the guy even says he didn't feel anything at first. And then they go double it. You know, so I'm not sure if that's a, uh, the blackjack anointing or uh, w whatever, but uh, it's certainly not uh, the Holy Spirit. If it's the true Holy Spirit, he would have healed the gentleman. Um, and you'll notice also during the clip, um, they never present the gospel. The gospel's never preached to this guy. So let's play that clip right now. And I don't mean to get personal, uh, but I just, I, I see like, uh, like generational fears, like have held down your family and almost like caused a fibromyalgia to come on someone or is that right yep and so somebody has like a neck problem yeah is that your mother my mother and i your mother and you okay see and it's even caused breathing problems like breathing problems in the night like uh waking up hard time breathing when you're waking up yeah is that true yes is. okay and i don't know you we just met, okay? And I'm not getting fed any lines from anybody else, but I do hear Holy Spirit, and He is speaking to me. And, and there's something else though, like, I don't know if it was like a hernia or uh, something in your stomach area, but something that you had to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. What is that, like that, that I'm, I'm talking it, about? It was a mass that they found. Right here? Uh, it was on my right side, yeah. Mm. See, no, I don't know, I don't know that stuff, okay? But I will tell you this, your life is forever changed from this moment. This is a defining moment for you. And it's not because of me, it's not because of Will, it's because the Holy Spirit has, is pursuing you. Did you, uh, do you have metal in your body? I do. Where? In my forearm. Okay, close your eyes. Do you have uh, restricted movement because of that? I do. Yeah, where? My wrist. Cool. Come on, man. This is gonna be amazing. You're gonna love this. Are you ready? Okay. We're gonna walk. We're gonna. We're gonna see movement. What's that? Yeah. What can, what can you? How it's, it's, that's my mobility right now. Just okay. that. That's as far as it goes. Okay. You ready? Close your eyes, man. This is going to be awesome. I got a lot of trust in you guys. Dude, don't worry. Like, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come. It's good. And I'm going to pray, and we're going to, we're going to see this thing. Are you ready? Okay. Close your eyes, man. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, do it. I ask that you would just move metal, Lord. I ask that you would make it flexible. Lord, I ask that you would work in joints and tendons and ligaments right now. Lord, I ask that you would bring strength. God, that you would melt things. Lord, whatever you have to do, Lord, whatever you have to do to this metal, come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, release your fire. Now, in Jesus' name, move it real quick. Same, better, or worse? I'd say it, it, it's about the same, but it okay. feels a little bit. Do you feel less, anything? You feel heat or anything? Pain. Okay. Wow, that's okay, cool. watch. Do you feel any heat or anything like that? If you feel heat, I want you to squeeze my hand as I'm praying for you. Close your eyes, man. Okay. Heat, electricity, anything. Come on. Come, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for... T are you squeezing my hand or are you just being nice? No, I'm just Okay. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for total rest... Come, Lord. Are you squeezing it harder because you're feeling more heat? Okay. Come, Lord. Father, I ask for total restoration. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Double it now. In Jesus' name. Come, Lord. Total mobility be restored in the name of Jesus. Move that thing, buddy. Move that thing around. That's pretty good. It popped. It, feels it just good. popped? Does it pop a lot? No, not really. Come on, man. Do you, do you have better mobility? I would, I would say 
Not really. Um, a lot of this stuff comes from the occult. It does not have its origin in Christianity whatsoever. And these guys have imported it in from uh, Hinduism, for instance, slain in the spirit is exactly what they do in uh, Hindu Shaktipat, uh, which is a yoga uh, thing that they do over there. And when you look at uh, uh, clips of Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, for instance, who was doing it, uh, the effects are exactly the same. People fall down backwards, start laughing uncontrollably, start uh, speaking in tongues, start uh, doing all kinds of stuff. Rajneesh says his goal is to create a new man, one who is happily mindless. Um, this is what they're doing what is not in evidence in the Bible, except for the fact that a lot of what happens is actually in the Bible is called demonization. And so we've allowed demon, demonic spirits into the churches. This is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not force people to do things against their will, nor, does, uh, nor can we command the Holy Spirit, you know, throw the Holy Spirit across the room or put the Holy Spirit into people. This is just absolute heresy. Um, and uh, another clip we're going to show you right now shows uh, this uh, uh, young man who's part of this group. I believe he was the lead singer from Sleeping Giant. Uh, it'll show it in the clip. Um, they're praying for a missionary um, who's out there preaching the gospel to the Mormons. Now he's a cessationist and we wanna let you know we are not cessationist. We believe that there's true gifts still in functioning in the church today. We still believe in true signs and wonders, but we believe what they're showing you in this movie is lying signs and wonders. The thing that I want you to really notice on this clip is when they're praying for the missionary, and number one, I'd never let these guys put their hands on me, uh, no way, no shape, no how, but when he, they're praying for the, minister, uh, the, the, the missionary, um, the guy actually that's doing the praying says, Holy Spirit, I give you permission to come uh, into this missionary's uh, ministry. Number one, that young man needs to repent because he does not have the power or the authority to command the Holy Spirit about at all. I mean, that's not his power uh, or his authority to tell the Holy Spirit what to do. It's not like God is r up in heaven, wringing his hands going, gee, I hope Bill Johnson or Heidi Baker or one of these guys in the movie will let me do something today. And then he gets permission and hops down and does it. No, that's blasphemy. And this, these people in this movie need to repent. They need to repent of the, uh, their sins. And, and, uh, but it's about the deification of man. So that's, uh, let, let us just show you the clip right now. For a visitation like we read about, that's true, of spirit and truth, and Holy Ghost, I just give you permission to be God over this man's ministry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big problem today because this has all come in with Word of Faith and Latter Rain uh, um, theology, and uh, they really have no fear of God. They really think that they can tell God what to do. Word of faith say, just name it and claim it. Just, you know, declare it into existence. Uh, you know, we've got Joel Osteen and all these people, you know, just think positive and say positive things. So it's all about controlling God. And actually, as you said, the idea behind it is that we're all little gods and we can, we can do exactly what God can do. These guys talk about legislating things from the heavenlies and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is absolute and utter, it has nothing to do with true biblical Christianity. And that's why we're warning people, you need to stay away from people like that. Don't let them lay hands on you. Don't let them do things to you. Because uh, what they'll do is they'll try to slay you in the spirit and then prophesy over you and then put, set you down in some path that you never would have gone before. They've prophesied over so many people and said, oh, you're, an, you're a prophet now, you're an apostle. And they go off on this wild goose chase from which they may never return.
it's dangerous stuff. Right, and, and again, we do not recommend you you buy this movie or no. even uh, see the movie because uh, it, it, in doing our research for this, there were some very difficult it's times. It's creepy. Yeah. It's creepy. And and uh, not only is, is it creepy, but the if you it, uh, the one thing I noticed in this movie and in the deluxe edition is they totally contradict themselves. Yeah. They'll say you need to test this you know, with the word of God, you know, uh, you need to test these things, but then uh, they go, that, well, Christians don't really know the Bible these days, so they need to go to these teachers. Um, and, and again, that's setting up that false sense of hierarchy and, and uh, you need to just listen to the teachers. No, you need to be good Bereans. You need to test the spirit for yourself. You need to check and see if, if what they uh, say is true. Uh, yeah. Just like slain in the spirit. That when Jesus said, I am he, uh, it was his, Jesus' enemies that, fall, that That's fell correct. backward. Um, any other time in the Bible where, where the Lord uh, appeared, they fell on their face forward. Yeah, and it wasn't because they were, the God was pushing them down. It was because they fell because they were repentant or that they were overwhelmed by the sight of Jesus in John's case, from which they got the, the term slain in the spirit. It had nothing to do with what happened to John. So... You know, uh, God, it's the devil who overwhelms people. It's not, it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works with our will. That's God created a will in us, and we can either choose to serve Him or not. But He doesn't force us to do things. Right. And that's what the devil does, because that's his only option. And they say in many times in this movie that. Um, the Holy Spirit possesses them. The whole, that's not the oh, way the that's Holy Spirit works. They, they, that's not the way the Holy Spirit no, works. He indwells not. a believer. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's just not how it works. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the, the truth of the biblical truth is when we're born again, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, comes in and indwells us. He makes a new spirit within us, a new man. Um, he baptizes us. That's when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, subsequently, He can indwell us. He can, he can fill us and for service. And the Lord empowers us to do things for Him and sometimes supernaturally things that we could never do. That's why we do believe in the gifts of the Spirit. But we, what we don't believe is that God empowers people who are teaching false doctrine, who are making false prophecies, false apostles, false Christs. He doesn't legitimize them with true signs and wonders. He would not validate their ministries. And you'll notice all through the Bible, God initiates at all times the supernatural experience. Peter wasn't uh, doing Lectio Divina or contemplative prayer when he went up on the roof and was thrown into a trance. God in his sovereignty always initiates the supernatural yes. Uh, whatever God's the situation the one who's is. sovereign. And if you don't recognize that, if you think that somehow you have the right to tell him what to do, you know, the Bible says we can ask, seek, and knock. And it actually tells us that we should ask, seek, and knock. Uh, a lot of times you're, you're not getting what you need because you're not asking. But it doesn't say to declare. It doesn't say to, to speak words into God's ears and, and all the stuff that these guys use. It's, we're, we're not bossing God around. God's the boss. And often these guys think that they know better than God. But the thing is, I've learned from long experience, I often don't know better than God. I need him to help me to go the right way. Uh, another, uh, a couple of the things that they'll, they'll do to condition people, and these are cults, folks. These are true cults. Uh, we're going to play a, a clip uh, by Heidi Baker. And... Uh, Basically, a, a lot of their spiel is you need to be like a child. You need to, and they, they kind of put a twist on having childlike faith. Being a child doesn't mean being naive and undiscerning. I had, and the, my kids knew my voice right away. And I, but I had to teach them not to run out into traffic, right. not to put themselves into danger. Absolutely. And they could hear my voice. Well, and Jesus says, that if, if you're his, you will hear his voice. You don't have to be trained to do that. I think that's a ploy yeah, um, to, to uh, uh, make people, because uh, even with Dan Bohai, he'll go, uh, once we got past ignorance and fear. Th th what they're really talking about is once they got past discernment. Yeah. You know? Well, the problem is they've never taught these people 
anything to do with Christian maturity because the biblical de definition of Christian maturity is that we learn to know what the difference between right and wrong. Think about it. If you knew the difference between right and wrong, you wouldn't have any problems. Our problem is we often don't know and we get fooled by the devil. The devil saying this is right when it's wrong. So they're making people all dependent on them. This is a very cultic technique. Right. You make them de totally dependent on the pastor and he's the arbiter of everything. It's like, it's a Catholic thing. It's like he's the Pope. No, we are all to learn to discern. And Paul said, you know, he, he complimented the Bereans because they went home after he preached and checked out what he said in the scripture. And by the way, the difference between a true teacher and a false teacher is a false teacher says, don't judge. A true teacher, teacher says, judge what I say, like Paul said. Right, and uh, to all our listeners and everybody watching this, we want you to get in your Bibles and test to see if what we're saying is true. And if it's not, you will need to reject it. You know, but balance this against the Word of God. Um, well, we're gonna play that clip from Heidi Baker now. And what, the first clip is from the Holy Ghost movie and her, uh, what we just discussed. And the second clip is Heidi Baker putting a spirit into a young teenager. Now, the second clip, really watch this, and you judge whether this spirit that Heidi Baker is putting into this poor young man who writhes, it was writhing in pain. It, when I first saw this, it reminded me when Jesus and, uh, and his apostles came upon the guy who uh, the demons were named Legion in the graveyard. Uh, when he was breaking out of his shackles. This is the kind of spirit that they're putting into the, into the guys. Uh, uh, that, that'll be on the second clip. I believe if Jesus and the apostles were, hit, were here on earth and would have been in that meeting, they would have been casting the demons out of the young teenage man that Heidi Baker put into him. So let's go ahead and play that clip. Learning the language of Holy Spirit is like learning the language of this world. But now think about how you learn a language. The way you learn a language is you become childlike, you listen, you're not afraid to make mistakes. If you're arrogant and you're proud, you can't learn a language well because you're, you're too afraid to make a mistake. But if you're childlike and you're not afraid to humble yourself and become like a little child, you'll learn a language. It's the same kind of process learning Holy Spirit's language. And I see a very strange vision right now where I see crowns within crowns within crowns within crowns within crowns within crowns. And as soon as you take the crown off and place it on the child, I see like a pyramid of crowns upon the child's head and they take the largest one off and place it on another and there's another one there. And I see this, this um, I feel like there's this, it's like a mountain of provision of anointing. The more you give away, the more you will receive, says the Lord. So right now, I'm sensing, I'm sensing really strongly. Uh, <laughs> it's going to sound a little odd, but too late. Uh, I want you just to take in the spirit realm that crown that's on your head and just place it upon someone else they're going to just get wrecked all over the room you just gonna, okay don't don't do it don't do it like it doesn't matter do it in the most impartation most impartation that you've ever believed for right now you're going to impart to each other so you're going to take it, you're going to put it on somebody else's head, a watch, and then say, more Lord. Whoa! More Lord. Everybody, place, place that anointing, that crown, that gift upon someone else's head. Keep praying. Every single one of you, impartation, legacy, 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 legacy. Increase your glory. More, Lord. Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. More, Lord. Fire. There's fire. Place it 
on their heads. Find somebody. I think he's got it. Shake up, Baba. Fire. Place it on another one's head. Fire. Shh. Legacy. Legacy. As the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Prophesy over them ten times. Start to prophesy over it ten times. I have seen where these guys are standing over people who are obviously demonized. And you, you, you mentioned to them, this guy's demonized. He's, he's crying out in pain. He, he needs help. And they're going, oh, no, the Holy Spirit's all over that person. Well, what kind of a thing is that to say anyway? The Holy Spirit doesn't get all over someone and overwhelm them. The Holy Spirit empowers people to serve Him and, and do what's right. They don't get out of control because that's not a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Right. They don't get uh, all chaotic. They get peaceful because the fruit of the Spirit is peace, etc. So test them, and one of the ways to test is by the fruit of the Spirit. Right, the, and the, as well as the whole drunk in the spirit, you need to drink this new wine. You'll notice that once this manifestation comes on people, they can no longer preach the word. And uh, yeah, I think it was, I so believe it was, it. yeah, I believe Bill Johnson said that, well, when the Lord gives you bread, uh, eat the bread. When he serves wine, drink the wine. But Peter at Pentecost distanced himself from, they thought they were drunk at that point. And Peter, he was quite he, clear, he was quite clear he that said, they were not drunk. These men are not drunk. And they're speaking in real tongues and the people around them could understand what they were saying. And by the way, when they were speaking in tongues, they were preaching the gospel. Right. This is another problem. Which is you sorely don't missing do in this movie. I mean, that's part of the problem. It's not so we can babble and act like we're self-righteous. It's so that we can help people. And I know people who have gotten the gift of tongues to be able to speak a language they don't speak. But these guys, no, it's all about showing off. It's all about being holier than thou. And that's very, very troubling. Well, and it's about, um, I, I heard a, a, a newscaster on a news channel uh, state when they were talking about Robin Williams and his death and all that, he said, uh, uh, people in America will watch uh, their entertainers if something happened to them. They'll watch that around the clock for, for two days. And he said, welcome to the United States of uh, entertainment where people are more, uh, they, they are more hip with emotion they, than they are with the facts. Exactly. You they know? just want to be they entertained. They want to have something shocking happen instead of actually delving into God's word. But the interesting part is we've got the testimonies of two people in this series who came out of those churches. Right. And one of the problems was, is all this monkey business that they do became rather boring because there wasn't anything really being taught. There was no real help. You go away from the service going, what did I get out of it? And then when they heard Jacob Prash and some other people, and they went, wow, real Bible teaching. It, it was a shock to them. And so I feel sorry for a lot of these guys because they're, they're never going to hear real Bible teaching. They're never going to see a real sign or wonder. They're never going to really experience the gifts of the Spirit because they've given themselves over to lying spirits. Right, and they're taught in their cult that if, if a spirit within you is speaking against their anointed teacher, oh, yeah. that you need to reject that. But what you need to know is that very, very well and most likely is the true Holy Spirit who's trying to get you out of this nonsense and they're trained to, to not touch their anointed teacher, but then uh, they, they will compare the, the unctions, the urgings of the Holy Spirit to a, a demon spirit, which well, that's the is problem. blasphemy. I, I've, I've seen it for myself they have learned to mistake the voice of a demon for the voice of the Holy Spirit. They're actually rejecting the voice of the Holy Spirit when he's saying, hey, that, that person's, they don't have the Holy Spirit, they're demonized, you know? Hey, that guy's not teaching what's right from the Bible. But then the other side, you know, you got the demon on one side and the angel on the other or something. But it's like the other voice is saying, oh, well, you know, that guy's, yeah, he makes some mistakes once in a while, but what he's teaching is basically good, you know, and, and all this kind of stuff. Oh, that's going to be, it's okay if he's writhing on the floor. He'll be all right. He'll be fine. But they're listening to the wrong entity. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit anymore.
Right, and one thing that's, that uh, all these folks that are involved with this disclaim is how many, Sandy, how many false prophecies does it take to make a false prophet? Oh my goodness, well, you know, they, they were, Bob Jones said, uh, you can be only 10% right and be a true prophet of God. And that's about his accuracy right there. No, the Bible says you have to be 100% right. right. If you're hearing from God, are you gonna be 10% right? No, you're going to be 100% right. And so we test them. And if they fall down on one prophecy that they said, thus saith the Lord, or I heard this from the Lord, they're a false prophet. That's how it was in the Bible. That's how it is today. Um, and uh, I also want to go into some of the techniques that are con artist te techniques that are They've been using it since the tent revivals every, and part of that is cold reading. Um, but the basic procedure of cold reading, let me explain this, and you, this is used throughout the whole movie, and they, they uh, say it's the Holy Spirit speaking to them, but actually they're just doing a cold reading. Before starting the actual uh, reading, the reader will typically try to elicit cooperation from the subject before saying something as, I often see images that are a bit unclear and which may sometimes mean more to you than me. If you help, we can uncover these new things about you. One of the most crucial elements of a convincing cold reading is a, sub a subject eager to make connections or reinterpret vague statements in any way that will help the reader appear to make specific prediction, uh, predictions or intuitions. While the reader will do most of the talking, it's the subject who provides the meeting. After determining the subject is cooperative, they always say, you know, always ask permission. Even before the reiki, they ask for permission to do that. That's opening yourself up to another spirit or a con man. The reader will, take a, uh, will make a number of probing statements or questions, typically using variations of the meth methods noted below. Uh, one of those techniques is shotgunning. Shotgunning is a commonly used uh, practice in cold reading techniques. Uh, the technique uh, is named after a shotgun because it, it shoots out a, a, four, a cluster of small projectiles in the hope that one, one of these strikes may be correct. Uh, shotgunning a, a, a uh, representative of one of these vague statements will be, I see a heart problem with a family figure in your family, a father, a grandfather, an uncle, a cousin. I'm definitely seeing ch chest pain here for a father figure in your family. A vast variety of medical problems have chest pain as a symptom, and heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide. Um, another technique used is also uh, what is called the Barnum, uh, Barnum statement, or the uh, uh, the Barnum statement, some representatives of these types of cold readings will be, I sense that you are sometimes insecure, especially with people you don't know very well. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. What? You have a box of old unsorted photographs in your house. Huh. Oh, gee. Yeah, it's not like anybody wouldn't have. You, you had an accident when you were uh, a child involving water. You're having... Uh, problems with a friend or relatives. Uh, your father passed on due to problems in his chest or uh, abdomen. And I would like to say thank you to Captain Obvious for those kind of yeah, statements. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, there's, a, there's an old movie, and I think it was Tyrone Power is in this movie. And um, he learned, this is, these are techniques you can actually learn from people who know how to do this, like hypnotists and people like that. They know how to do these kind of cold reading things. And so they would get up in front of an audience. This is really big, big back in the 20s and 30s. They'd get up in front of an audience and call somebody out and just ask some questions. And as they're talking to them, they can tell by both what they say, their body language, how they're dressed, and everything. It's like sort of a Sherlock Holmes thing. And you can tell where they're coming from, and you can end up being very accurate in, in, uh, in describing their life or describing their problem or whatever. This is not a Holy Ghost thing at all. This is a technique that can be learned, and people have used it for a long time. You Watch that movie if you get a chance to, because the guy's really good at it. And he amazes people, but it's all a technique. And they also usually have a helper somewhere that has already talked to people. Um, like Peter Popoff. A good example is Peter Popoff, <laughs> who's back on TV again, amazingly to yes. me, after he just pulled a total scam and he was he had an ear, earpiece and he was listening to his wife give him information. He goes, wait a minute, there's a guy in, the, in, the, in here called George, you know, and, and of course there was a guy in there called George because they filled out a thing in the back 
uh, filled out a card with all their information and medical information. And she's going, yes, he has a hernia, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's such a scam. The whole thing is a scam to manipulate people. Why? Let's see. Hmm. Could it be money? Yeah, could be. And, and further in the Holy Ghost movie, um, uh, I believe it was Will Hart, they were standing near a person and they, uh, the first thing they said was, well, we, we really weren't listening to your conversation, you know, and, and that sets them <laughs> up for that. And then he claims to speak uh, uh, prophetically over her and he actually puts a, uh, uh, we're going to play that clip. She puts, he puts the gift of prophecy into her, finds out that uh, she was into psychiatry uh, that's what, uh, you know, her major was or where she was going to school at. Number one, the, the person was never identified as a Christian. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the gift giver. We do not right. give gifts. We do not activate, impart. We don't shove those gifts into there. The Holy Spirit sovereignly activates spiritual gifts that will benefit the body of that's Christ. Right. He knows what that person is going to be good for. Right. And the, the last thing with cold reading, just to, to end that little, uh, this part of it. Uh, well, let, uh, may, uh, let's first play that clip that shows Will Hart uh, with this young lady. All right. I'm just been, I haven't been listening, but I'm, I'm with this guy. I just keep seeing as I, as I look at you, I see like psychology and I feel like there's something about psychology on your life and I feel like you're going in really to study it. And I want you to know it's a gift. It's something that the Lord's really put on you. And I want you to know there's also a tie-in for, um, I also felt like I saw South America and I saw um, Africa. I saw those two places open up over you as well. So I feel, like, I feel like the Lord's really, really putting that on you. It's really good. But it's not just adults. I feel like there's something with little kids, psych psychiatry, psychology. So it's going to be good for you, sweetie. I want you to go after it, okay? Is it scary, yeah? No. Okay, good. Okay. Good. Are you studying? Yeah. 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 For, for, for kiddos? Yeah. 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 It's okay. It's okay. Okay. I just want you to know, like, I, I'm just, I, like, I haven't been listening in. Like, I've been just overhearing, but I want you to know something, like, the Lord just stopped me before you left to like run and specifically tell you that. And he's calling you, girl. He's calling you out. And I want you to know something like you're really going to affect lives. And there's a gift of writing on you as well. And it's not just, it's more than just, it's more than just studying something. There's books that are going to come out of you and you're really going to shape and change. So I just want you to know, like, I just love it on you. I really, really, really do. It's a precious gift. I want you to know it's exactly where you're supposed to be. Thank yeah, you. and then I just, I, this is going to sound weird, but I saw, as soon as I looked at you, I saw Colorado open up over you. Really? Yeah, and I feel like there's something really tied into Colorado for you. I feel like there's a season, uh, you're like a trainer, you like work with people, and, 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 I, and I see you like just encouraging coaching and training, so I love it. It's awesome. Can I, can I, like I studied, um, I didn't study, but I work kind of in working with people and, and counseling people. Can I just pray for you really quick? And, and just ask the Lord to increase that because I saw it on you. Yeah? Come yeah. on, give me your hand. Oh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you can you hold this for a second? We just had lunch. Yeah, I'm tired. Like can I can I just take this? Yeah. I, I didn't even hear your name. Katie. Katie. Father, I just thank you for Katie. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would release such a gift on her, Lord, that she would speak to hearts, God. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. And Father, I ask now in Jesus' name, Lord, would you release a spirit of wisdom? a spirit of discernment. I feel like you're the one that everybody calls when they're in trouble. And I want you to know something, girl. It's for a reason. It's for a purpose. But you're not called to carry everybody's issues. You're not called to carry your parents' issues. You're not called to carry everyone's issues. You're called to minister to them through it. And, and I want you to know, girl, like, sure. thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're releasing a great spirit of counsel on this one. And Holy Spirit, Lord, as she ministers to people, would hearts be touched and would lives be changed in Jesus name in Jesus name hey man bless you girl okay Come do you know on. how I knew that do you know how I knew that like you know I'm not just like like just shotgunning things off do you know how I knew that yeah does he like talk to you that way do you want him to no I'm serious like we're not like I'm not out here like I know we got cameras and stuff like that but like I was like a drug addict like I was a 17-year-old drug addict and the Holy Spirit fell on me. 
and like changed me. And the Lord started to speak to me. And I started to move in that stuff that night. And uh, and I can pray for you, man, if you want to flow in it, if you want to. And then like I'm, we're not looking for anything. We're gonna walk away. We'll probably never see you again. But if you want to, I can pray for you. I want to ask the Lord put that gift that He puts on me for the prophetic and on you. Do you want to move in that? Because you're a dreamer, right? You dream a lot. You wake up constantly, and you're a dreamer. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have it, you actually carry it. And it can be a burden. Like, I feel like you take on parents and like you take on that role and like that, that like things that you shouldn't take on. But I want you, but, but we can get rid of that. Like, we can just get rid of that heaviness. Yeah. Do you, can I pray for you to receive that gift? Or, yeah. Awesome. Cool. You're like so, you're so sweet. Let me see this cup. Oh. Yeah. Roxbury. Yeah. Okay. So listen, I'm going to just be honest. You're going to feel something when I pray for you, okay? You might feel a little heat. You might feel a little electricity. Okay? It's going to be okay, though. Okay? So if you do, I want you to just squeeze my hand, okay? Okay. You hear me? Just close your eyes real quick. Close your eyes. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you for this one. Father, I thank you for this one. And Holy Spirit, would you fall on her? Holy Spirit, would you come and fill her up, God? Lord, I ask you would release the gift of discernment. And Lord, I just break off any heaviness that would try to come against her. In Jesus' name, and Lord, I pray. Lord, any prophetic gifting, would you release it and pour it out over this one? In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask for ears to hear and eyes to see. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Did you feel anything when I was praying for you? No? Yeah. What did you feel? Um, just yeah. I, I just... I keep seeing Africa on you, girl. I feel like there's going to be a trip there. Have you ever been? No, but I really want to. Yeah. I, I felt like it was like su like southern, almost at South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you want to go? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Durban's going to be very, very, very key for you. Because I feel like there's something about like the coast. Like it's something like you're drawn to the coast. And, and it's going to be very, very important for you there. So, yeah. Come on, girl. Yes. It's going to be good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions? No, you're no, just like. I think you pretty much answered all my questions. Yeah? yeah. You have no questions at all. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> and do you know Jesus? Do you like? Yeah. Have you ever had an encounter with him like that, where he's just spoken to you? Not yeah. Really. I like. Well, I'm sure, like. I was a drug addict, and my parents like grew up in the church, so I kind of grew around it, so I like experienced it. But man, what brought me was an encounter like this. Yeah. And that's what, because I knew it was real after an encounter like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would just give yourself over to it, girl. You got it. You carry it. <laughs> You're really sweet. I really love it. Oh, thanks. Bless you. Last uh, thing in cold reading is the rainbow ruse. And this is a gem. Uh, the rainbow ruse is a crafted statement which simultaneous, simultaneously awards the subject with a specific personality trait right. as well as the opposite of that trait. With such a phrase, a cold reader can cover all possibilities and appear to have make an accurate deduction in the mind of the subject, despite the fact that a rainbow ruse uh, statement is vague and contradictory. And you'll notice this all through the Holy Ghost movie. Uh, this technique is used since personality traits are not quantifiable um, and, and also um, become nearly everybody has experienced both sides of a particular emotion. Some statements of this type might be, uh, most of the time you're positive and cheerful, but there's been a time in the past when you were very upset. Oh, oh my goodness what gracious me. What a revelation. <laughs> you are a very kind and considerate person, when, uh, but when somebody does something to break your trust, <laughs> you feel deep-seated anger. Hmm. Ding, ding, buzz, buzz. Wow. I would say that you're a mostly shy and quiet, but when the mood strikes you, you can easily become the center of attention. What insight. Yeah. I mean, these guys are... That's, Just right you know, on the ball. This is, like you said, I, I, I want to address this idea that you can, you can impart the, the gifts or the offices. They say they can make you an apostle, make you a prophet, and all this kind of stuff. No, that's never been the case. It's always the Holy Spirit. If we lay hands on someone and pray for them, it's not imparting something. It's that we're agreeing with the will of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, we pray in His will just as Jesus 
taught us to pray. We don't pray outside of his will. We don't make our own will paramount to his. We always say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But this, this is something that happened to me when I was going to a church. I think I told this already, but, you know, a guy came up to me and after the church service and he wanted to lay hands on me. I said, no, because I'd already had bad experiences with that. And uh, he says, well, I'm going to prophesy to you anyway. I'm prophesying to you that you're going to raise the dead in Micronesia. And I just, I stopped for a minute. I thought, you know what? That's a false prophecy. Why? Because he's like puffing me up. Why would I need to know that I'm going to raise somebody from the dead ahead of time? All that's going to do is puff me up and make me think, ooh, I'm really something. I'm special. I'm special to the Lord. So what they, that's what they do. They use this stuff to puff people up, puff up their pride. And who is that? That's not the Holy Spirit. That's the devil doing that. Or people who think they could summon up the Holy Spirit, right. like Jen Johnson, yeah. who says the Holy Spirit is blue and sneaky. And uh, this will kind of probably offend you, but oh well. And the Holy Spirit to me is like the genie from Aladdin. I view the Holy Spirit like the genie from Aladdin. And he's blue. Unplanned. Perfect. And he's funny. And he's sneaky. And he's courageous. And he's everywhere. And he's wonderful. That's who he is to me. And he's funny. And he's sneaky. He's silly. And I mean, that just said, and Jen Johnson in the Holy Ghost movie also said when she was around, we're going to play that clip right now, um, said that uh, uh, God, she asked God if, if God is real to, bring, uh, to blink the streetlight uh, three times. And he did that, and wow, he's real. So um, let's go ahead and play that clip. And I just, you know, kind of told God, God, if you're real, you know, make those streetlights blink three times, you know, like classic, like the fleece before the Lord or whatever. And um, the streetlight blinked three times. I got there all by myself. And I remember the ball just dropping out of my hand. I ran into my mom like, Mom, you know. She was like, yeah, God is real. Okay, well, you decide for yourself after that, watching that, and the Holy Spirit is blue like her jeans, and he's sneaky, and he's funny. Um, you judge for yourself on that one. I just one. find that to be a very blasphemous statement from her. She has no fear of God. Very shallow. She doesn't understand that, yes, God loves us and he sent his son to die for us, but he's also the judge, ultimate judge. And, the, and words like that are going to be judged. And you know, you know what? The, one of the disturbing things was at the corn concert. And I get it that we need to take our light into darkness, but we don't party with the darkness. We still don't um, uh, partner with works of darkness. The Bible's very clear about that. And I remember when Brian Head Welch, um, I don't care for that kind of music in corn, but he is an accomplished guitar player. He is very good at what he does. Um, and when he got saved, oh man, that was just, uh, I rejoiced about that because I knew a lot of people who listened to corn who then I could say, well, this guy got saved. He quit corn. God, it, it seemed uh, in his statements that God wanted him to quit corn. Now he's back playing with corn. Um, but, you know, I, I rejoiced in the fact that, that he, he did that, um, but now he's back playing with Korn, and they were, they were with Rob Zombie, and he actually promotes a Rob Zombie song, which he jams with Rob Zombie on, and it's a song called Am I Evil? Yeah. Uh, we're just going to play a very mm -hmm. short clip of that, um, and just so you could see this for yourself, see that we're uh, tell, being truthful about this. Y'all feeling evil? Am I evil? Yes, I am. Take five. Anyway, uh, again, judge for yourself on that. Um, uh, during, the, uh, they did somewhat present the gospel when they were out there in the meet. Uh, it wasn't a meet and greet, but they were, they came out with Todd White. And now we're going to show um, 
that Todd White, again, he's, this clip we're going to show from Todd White, he's guessing at what's wrong with the guy. First he taught, says, thinks it's the guy's shoulder, but he got that wrong. But then he goes to the back. And then, as you'll see, uh, Todd sets him up to a, a ruse that was used by A.A. A. Allen, uh, W.V. Grant, I believe, did it, the leg oh, pulling thing, yeah. where they, they lengthen the leg. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's play that little tricky clip right now. Anything that gives you any trouble with one of your shoulders. No, physically, are you healthy, completely? Is there any problems at all, physically? Uh, my back isn't the best. Okay. We call him broke back, back Joe. Joe. Did you really? Yeah. Broke Did you break the bottom? Joe. The bottom yeah, of broke back Joe. Joe. No way. Okay. Broke back Joe. So you got to see this, dude. Come here. I'm going to show you something. Come here. Okay, sit right there. Sit? sit. Yep, sit. And then sit back some. Put your butt back on the stage. Like, sit back on the stage. Here. Like, sit back a little bit more. Come up here. Okay. So, bless you, man. All right, so which side of your back hurts the worst? Uh, this side, yeah. Okay, all right. So how long ago did you break? Oh, a couple years ago. Okay, so you got pain? A little bit. Did you go yeah. down your leg? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, so take your pants and hike them up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna put your legs together. All right. All right, so when when you look at, you already went, to, you've gone to chiropractors and doctors and all that. Yeah, they tell your legs, everything. They yeah. tell your legs shorter, your one leg shorter than the other one. And it throws you back out. Okay, so regardless right. of, like, well, yeah, no matter what, you like, you see take your thing. toes and, okay. so okay. bring your heels together. See how short it is? That's why it's broken back, back Joe. No, Joe. but look, you can see your feet. Do you see your feet? Yeah. Just let it, I'll hold them, just relax. I got you. Don't try to hold them up. All right. relax, so, bud. okay, so if you see this leg, it's longer than the other one, and because of, with back injuries and stuff, a lot of times it throws your legs out. Okay. So what I'll do, regardless of what you believe, I'm gonna pray for you, and Jesus is gonna grow your leg out and heal your back. You don't even have to believe, dude. So you get into the, the weirdest place of belief that you want. You can unbelieve as much as you want, and God's gonna grow your leg out and heal your back. I promise, man. Okay. Okay? So because regardless of where someone's heart is, his love for you is bigger. Like I know because I got shot at, I was that guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. So Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Left leg, I command you grow right now. Jesus' name. Look at it. See it? Whoa. Look at that. Do you guys see that right there? Yes. Right. It's longer now than the other one. <laughs> That's nuts. So, Father, I thank you for a brand new back, God. I thank you that it's not about religion. It's about Jesus. Um, so, again, you decide for yourself. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I really pray for Brian Head Welch. He got in with the wrong crowd immediately. Uh, I believe he went to the Welton Academy, which is a school of, to me, it's a school of sorcery and magic, but there are people be definitely disagree with me uh, about that, but um, I don't believe it's of the Lord. It's those supernatural schools. And you know what? I really believe, no, I'm sure of it, Bill Johnson and all you folks out there with your schools of the supernatural, you need to repent of that, especially what you're doing to children and, and to young people. Yes. And you need to shut your schools down right now. That's what really bothers me, you and I both, most of all, is the way they go after children and teenagers and, and college kids. They, they travel around to college campuses and fool them. There's a college campus right up there by Bethel. And a lot of those kids have gone over to that, to that church. And they've ended up really messed up. I got a letter from a guy, uh, email from a guy the other day, and he's coming down on me for having a discernment website. He says, what are you doing for the Lord? You're not doing anything for the Lord. I raise people from the dead every day. And I had to write back to him and say, hey, bro, you're a nut job. Stop saying that kind of stuff. It's not, you know it's not true. And I'm like, where's the proof of that? I don't see the proof. Where is it in the newspaper? Where, where Has anybody come forward and said, yeah, that's what happened to me. But I actually know stories from Bethel where they didn't raise the dead. And they had told all these kids, oh, you know, that they could raise the dead. And then, oops, somebody died. So, and the, th and the way they manipulate these little kids, they just manipulate them. And they put ideas in their head that are not from the Lord. 
And this next clip we're going to show you is a representative of that, of the children's director. Um, I'm not sure if she's still a director at Bethel, but this is the kind of stuff that they put the kids through. Uh, we're going to show that clip right now. This was not, by the way, uh, on the Holy Ghost movie. This is a separate clip, uh, just so you know. But this is how they're training uh, children up. We heard this testimony of, of, of friends were visiting each other, and they overheard their two, three, and four-year-old little girls playing Raise the Dead. Now, three-year-old, you lay on the ground and you be dead first. Three years old. You be dead first, and I'm going to resurrect you. And so you, they, the, the parents are like, <laughs> looking around the door, and, they, and the children are just going, okay, I command you to be alive in the name of Jesus. And the dead child gets up, and they both celebrate. And now it's, okay, now it's your turn. You lay on the floor. And so they just were taking turns playing Raising the Dead. Now, <laughs> the other testimony that I heard that was so great that was like that is this one little girl comes in, and she's got both of her arms shoved down in her T-shirt. And she comes out to her grandma, and she goes, Nana, pray for my arms to grow out. She's three years old, okay? Pray for my arms to grow out. Now, so, of course, your, her Nana obeys, and I command this arm, so she wiggles and wiggles, and the arm pops out, and she goes, okay, and they celebrate, now pray for the other one to grow out. Now, <laughs> think about the mindset that exists in a three-year-old child that their games are now full of the supernatural. Okay, well, judge for yourself again. Um, teaching little babies, little small children to raise a dead, saying that they're going up to heaven and coming back and hanging out in heaven. Uh, most of these people really need some white jackets on them, I think. But what they're teaching here are not true words of wisdom and knowledge, as they would state that that is. They're teaching clairvoyance. The term clairvoyance from French, uh, the French clair meaning clear and voyance, voyance meaning uh, vision is used to refer to the ability to gain information about an object, person, location, or physical event through means other than the known senses. It's a form of ESP, uh, Professor X or whatever you want to call it, extrasensory uh, perception. A person said to have the ability of clairvoyance is referred to as a clairvoyant, one who see, sees clearly. But God, God's word warns us against that in his Isaiah 8, 19, when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists, which is what are these folks are in the Holy Ghost movie, who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Deuteronomy 12, 30 further uh, states and warns, take heed to thyself that thou art not snared by following them after they are destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their God, saying, how did these nations serve their God? Even so, let us do likewise. See, they, they've confused the gifts of the Spirit with things that are solical. Um, there's some kind of ability for humans to actually have some clairvoyance in ESP. They've tested it out. Um, and they can, they can do certain things. Um, there's obviously the ability of the enemy to, to give people information. And that's what a medium is and, and all that kind of stuff. Because the demons have been around They've for been a around long, long know, time and they, they know, know the things events. About people. Yeah. They know stuff. But the thing is, is none of that has to do <laughs> with the gifts of the Spirit because the difference is, is that God is actually telling you what's actually happening and what's real. He, that's what he tells his prophets. And by the way, personal prophecy, it's not in the Bible. Yeah, there were prophets who went to the kings, but it was an issue that had to do with all of Israel. Same thing today, all the church. They don't give people personal readings. That's what they're doing. That's what a psychic does. They're doing psychic readings for people. And that's a solical practice, even sometimes a demonic practice. It's not from the Holy Spirit. Right, and, and, but, but the, we, we also understand that the Holy Spirit does give us intuitions that That's we correct. need to put it on our heart to pray for somebody right. or perhaps share a verse That's of scripture right. that will give comfort right. to something they're going through. But we're that not we don't. like manipulating people. We're not like <laughs> you know, trying to get them over to, to some weird teaching or we're not like brainwashing them with ideas. He'll put us on our heart to pray or he'll, or he'll warn us, this is not right. But if the Holy Spirit warns you this is not right, you don't just go with that. You don't, you don't just end there. 
You go back to your Bible. And that's how the Holy Spirit will teach you what's wrong with it. That's where people often stop. They go, you know, there was something kind of weird about that meeting, but I don't know what it was. I was like, go to your Bible and find out. Test the spirits. Ask the Lord for wisdom, because the Lord will give you wisdom to, to, to know, to be able to find out what's going on. But don't just stop with the intuition of the Holy Spirit. That's a good thing. But the Holy Spirit wants to be your teacher, and the way he teaches you is not through the air, not through some antenna. It's through God's holy word, which is eternal. Um, uh, uh, a quote from back to Brian Welch at Corn and uh, Brian, if, if you see this, I would beg you to repent and uh, uh, just get away from these folks that you've been involved in. And uh, I, I promise I, I will pray for you. I, I hope you're taken away from the folks who've, who, who I believe have given you some real evil influences and, and it would be such a remarkable testimony to get away from these people. Uh, but Brian Welch went on to say, when Jesus walked the earth, he was attached to two realms, the earthly realm and the heavenly realms. My goal is the same. I can be banging my head at corn concerts all over the world and be connected with God and spirit at the same time. I used to detach from this world all the time and party with drugs. Now I must, I must I just detach myself from this world and I party with God and all my peeps, no matter what they believe. And he, they, no matter what they believe, that's a key statement uh, that Brian said. Drugs take you into the spiritual world illegally, spiritually speaking. No. Jesus tra takes you into the spiritual world legally. Correct. It's not it's the John Crowder and that Token the Ghost not and all that garbage. Drugs are a solical thing. They affect your mind. They affect, they affect your body. They are not spiritual things at all. And I found that out because I did plenty of them when I was younger. And I did LSD and I did all that stuff. And uh, I got actually afraid at one point because I had demons starting to show up. And so I've had experience with the demonic realm and I know what it is. And that's why if you're in a, ever in one of these meetings and they try to slay you in the spirit or do something to you, you need to be praying, Lord, if this, if this is not from you, I do not want it. Because that's what I prayed. And the guy, one of the main guys from Brownsville tried to slay me many times in the spirit when I was in a meeting before I knew about this stuff. And uh, uh, they were not able to. And I was very thankful to the Lord later that, that he protected me. Because I prayed, Lord, I've had... I've had instances of demonism in my life already, and I don't want that. I believe in you. I, I belong to you. And so anybody that has prayed that prayer, literally, <laughs> I've talked to a lot of people, did not get slain in the spirit. That ought to tell you something. The, the people at, at the William Branham Crusades in Germany, there were groups of people at two of their crusades, and they prayed, Lord, if this is not from you, if this healing is not from you, then we ask that you prevent this from happening. And William Branham came out on the stage and said, my angel isn't here tonight, so I can't heal anybody. I don't tell you something. When true believers pray, then the Lord protects them. And I, I very much counsel you to pray those prayers. There's nothing wrong with praying that prayer. That's not being judgmental. It's not, uh, you know, not touching the Lord's anointed. It's between you and the Lord to say, Lord, I love you. I don't want any other spirit in my life. Try it. And I think you'll find out what happens. Right. And if you have a leader who's cautioning you not to do what they will Sandy, they what already... Sandy just said, I would be singing... Feet don't fail me now. Ben, Benny Hinn and Rodney Howard Brown did that long ago. And Brownsville would do it regularly. They would say, whatever you do, don't pray while you're trying to be slain in the spirit. Yeah. Don't pray. Empty your mind. Yeah. Leave your mind at the door. <laughs> That's what they said. And you, I found that to be the number one really bad thing because they're trying to prevent you from actually having a conversation with the Lord and asking him to help you. They don't want that. And I don't know if they know that and they're, and they're willfully deceiving people or they're just deceived. I don't know which. Only God knows that. But I'll tell you, man, you need to pray. And about being in the world, let's look at what Scripture talks about. Uh, when we read uh, of the world in the New Testament, we are we, uh, reading the, the Greek word cosmos. Cosmos most often refers to the inhabited earth and the people who live on the earth, which functions apart from God. Satan 
is the ruler of this cosmos. Look at John 12, 31. John 16, 11, 1. I mean, uh, John 16, 11. 1 John 5, 19. By the simple definition that the word world refers to a world system ruled by Satan, we can more readily appreciate Christ's claims that believers are no longer of, this wor of the world. That's right. We are no longer ruled by sin, nor are we carnal, nor are we bound by the principles of the world. In addition, we are being changed into the image of Christ, That's causing right. our interest in the world to become less and less as we mature in Christ. Now, if you're interested as, are right. still in the world, I would, you're, I would say you're not, you're not checking your faith well, daily. This is why I always loved about the old Larry Norman song, you know, uh, I'm only visiting this planet. <laughs> it's really true. Uh, our citizenship is now in heaven. It's not here. And so we shouldn't be concerned with all this solical stuff going on in this world. We need to be concerned with, with what God wants, uh, you know, and what he wants us to do. Uh, believers in Jesus Christ are simply in the world, physically present, but not of it, not part of its values. John 17, 14 through 15. As believers, we should be set apart from this world. This is the meaning of being holy and living a holy and righteous life, to be set apart. We are not to engage in the sinful activities the world promotes, nor are we to retain the insipid, corrupt mind that the world uh, creates. Rather, we are to conform ourselves and our minds as to that of Jesus Christ. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Well, that's the problem with so many churches today. They've become worldly. They're adopting the world's music the world's philosophies. Uh, you know, they're bringing in all this stuff from outside of Christianity uh, and trying to sort of Christianize it. You can't Christianize stuff like yoga. No. Because the philosophy comes with it. And actually, the, even the yogic poses are worship of a false god, etc. There are many things like that that people are trying to sort of uh, Christianize and, and smooth over that can't be smoothed over. Because it, it comes with its own philosophy. And so these churches, you, you know, you look at a lot of what's being taught today. It's all worldly stuff. It's all Eastern mysticism and New Age is what it actually is. And, you know, Dave Hunt long ago predicted the New Age was going to come into the church in seduction of Christianity. And everybody thought he was crazy. Well, that can never happen to the church. But and, now I, I turn on the yeah. tube and there's, there's Joel Osteen giving absolute new age stuff. Oh, just think positively and positive things will happen to you, you know. If you think negatively, uh-oh, karma will get you, you know. That's basically what, what they're teaching. And, and I think they're being pretty bold about it because people are accepting it. They love through, it. Through people like Oprah Winfrey. Uh, Bill Johnson uh, is, is very plain about accepting uh, new age practices yeah, he in his says, book, you Dreaming know, with that, God. Uh, they're taking over what, what Satan stole from God. No, they're taking over... <laughs> what Satan is doing and what he's been doing all along, it's not the way God works at all. So they've been confused. They've been fooled. And I feel, I, I actually, you and I talked about this. Yeah. We feel bad for them. Yeah, yeah. We really do. We're not doing this because we think we're so great. No. We, and, and we're trying to be like better, better than anybody else and smarter than anybody else. No. We want to see some correction happen to, to Christians and churches because otherwise, it's it's already go, going. We're already into the apostasy now. We're in the falling away, and people are falling away, by left and right. You need to come back to the Lord. And, and in Second Thessalonians two, it's very plain that once that great delusion comes, and it's here, I believe that's sent from God. There's going to be no that's returning the scary from part, that. And that's what that's what uh, Jacob talked about on the other video. Is that you know. Uh, once God, there's a point at which you go past the grace of God. We saw it with the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh kept hardening his heart and then <laughs> God hardened it for him, etc. There are many examples of this in, in scripture. And it's a scary thing when God takes his hands off and go, okay, do what you want. And I'm afraid he's done that with many, many churches. Their candlesticks have been removed, I believe. It's just like it says, in, you know, in, in uh, Revelation 1 through 3. The, the letters to the church. So, you know, people are operating outside of God's will at this point, And I fear for them. I really do. Now, I know that a few people have come out. People are coming out. 
because they realize it's wrong. But we need to, concerned Christians need to be praying for these guys because <laughs> I'm afraid for them, frankly. Right, and we also understand that being in the world but not of it is necessarily, if, uh, if we're going to be a light to those who are in spiritual darkness, we are to live in such a way that those outside the faith see our good deeds in our manner and know that there is something different about us. Christians who make every effort to live, think, and act like those who do not know Christ, in other words, they're just trapped by the world, do Jesus Christ a great disservice. Even the heathen, even the unsaved know that by their fruits you shall know them. And as Christians, we should exhibit the fruit of the Spirit that's, within us. That's the interesting part about these revival movements, quote unquote. They were very much targeted toward Christians. They're not targeted toward the unsaved. The unsaved are not interested in this weird antic stuff. They watched Benny Hinn on TV and go, the guy's a nut job. I don't want to have anything to do with that. And they certainly won't send him money. You know? Exactly. And it's funny because they end up having more discernment than Christians do. But this stuff is always targeted toward Christians. When Brownsville came to Guam, they had all the missionaries and pastors put on name tags. Why was that? So that they could help minister? No. It was so that they could identify who they were so they could slay them in the spirit. And it was all these people coming to get slain in the spirit. They, there was a bar, uh, you know, about 15 feet away. And they never even invited anybody to come in to hear the gospel. And they didn't actually really preach the gospel. They preached part of it. And that's another thing that bothers me. They use things from the Bible and the gospel to lure people in. And that's a trick of the enemy. Because he always put, lays error alongside of truth. And he uses the truth part to lure people into his error. Uh, being in the world also means we can enjoy the things of the world. We're in Hawaii right now, and it's, it's beautiful out there. God's creation is so awesome. It's a beautiful creation God has given us to enjoy. But we are not to immerse ourselves in what the world values, nor are we to chase after worldly pleasures. Pleasure is no longer our calling in life as it once was, but rather the worship of God. Daniel 12, 10 states, and this is really important, states, Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. Uh, me, those who have the true Holy Spirit and That's submit right. to his teaching will understand. Well, the great thing is, is that the Lord is always ready to give true believers who want to remain faithful to him wisdom. You know, look, you look at Solomon, the guy asked for the right thing. He could have asked for riches and all kinds of stuff, but he asked for wisdom, which God honored. God liked the fact that he did that. And then so he gave them, him everything else. But I experienced this myself because I did not, I could not understand what was going on in the churches back during the Toronto blessing in Brownsville. And uh, I said, Lord, please help me. I need to understand this so I can help the people of Micronesia because that's where I'm a missionary to. And uh, sure enough, he brought me right to the word. He showed me the verses that I needed to know. He brought me in contact with the right people. And uh, he, he'll do that. He, he will give you wisdom. That's, that's what it says in James, I believe. He will give you wisdom if you ask for it. And uh, in wrapping up this, the, one of the most disturbing things I noticed in this Holy Ghost movie was when they were in India. Uh, at one point in time, the, uh, the guy comes, uh, uh, sees two Indian gentlemen, and we're going to play that clip. He says he saw the Holy Spirit on them, whatever that means. These guys were never identified as Christians, but then after performing Reiki on, the, uh, uh, Reiki on these guys, uh, the one guy says, I, I feel uh, what you prayed, I believe in God, but this feeling is different. That in itself... That's a little scary. Uh, that's a little scary. Um, uh, so let's show that clip right now. And these two young guys come over and they come over to me. I see the Holy Spirit on them and we get into conversation. Do you like this? Yeah. That's good. And you can feel it here, can you? Yeah. Because my heart rate is going... Your heart rate is going fast. Yeah. Yeah, we recall that the Holy Spirit is touching your heart. Yeah, really. Yeah? Yeah. Why this place you chose? Well, we didn't, we just, you know, some place we're wandering. Oh. We're wandering wherever God leads us. 
it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit living in, in Jake is, is helping him to worship like that. Yeah. And you feel it inside, you feel him inside. Yeah, man, feeling is... It's very good. It's very, very good. Very, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Would you like to feel more of his presence? Would you like to feel more of this? Yeah, why not? Can I, can I pray you feel more? Yeah, why not? Can I pray that? OK. So what's your name again? It's... My name is Saga. Saga? S-A-G-A-R. Saga. 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 Can I put my hand on your shoulder, Saga? Yeah, that why be okay? not? OK. Um, put my hand on your chest. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask for more of the presence of God as Jake worships, that you'll feel his presence, yeah? OK. OK, so Father, thank you for Saga. Father, I just invite your presence. Thank you, Father, that you love Saga so much. You love him with all your heart, God. And this is the joy that you want to bring to Saga, your presence. And for him to know that you love him and that you care for him. So come, Holy Spirit. Just and ask for an increase of more of your presence, more of your goodness. And we just fill him from the top of his head right through to soles of his feet. In every area of his life, would you just overflow him? Lord, his heart is bursting with your presence. I want to just ask for more of your presence. I'm feeling that. You feel that? Yeah, I'm feeling yeah. that. Feel more, that. more, God. More, God. Come, Holy Spirit, more, God. Fill him, Lord. Just give him a taste of your joy and your love and your presence. And God is trembling. Yeah. Your knees shaking? Yeah, I can see that. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit on your on your body, son. Yeah, that's like. Right. Yeah, more. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Now, from the innermost being, from His innermost being, would you just fill Him? My heartbeats are telling that uh, He is present here. Yeah, you feel Him. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to experience as well? What's your name? Yeah. Your joy touches his heart, Lord. I feel like what you pray for me. You can feel that? There's more. There's more for you. That's my heart. Feeling will go feeling over control. Over control and I feel that what you pray. You all are very different. Huh? See, you all are very different. We're all different. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever experienced that before? You've not experienced, have you not experienced that you haven't experienced this before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I believe in God. Very, I know. very much I believe in God. But this feeling is different. Um, Kurt Koch, who was a researcher in the occult and wrote a number of books, uh, followed people like William Branham and, and uh, Catherine Kuhlman, and he actually called them what they were, which is spiritists. But he catalogs that when William Branham went to India for a crusade, that he met this guy who was, I think was a guru. And uh, William Branham ended up calling him the son of God returned. Ooh. So this has been going on for a long time, kind of recognizing the same spirit in other people. But this is the zeitgeist. This is the Weltgeist. This is not the Holy Spirit. And... Uh, this is what, what Leonard Sweet terms the Christ consciousness, etc. And it, it is not Jesus Christ. It is a, it's the spirit of Antichrist. And people are accepting that now. And they like it because he's given them all these thrills and, and, and being weird. And they can be totally weird and wild. And, and you know, it's, they can claim they're Christians. But that is not living in obedience to the Lord. It's not living in the fruit of the Spirit. It's not living according to His Word. What are you going to do? The, the Bible says, they love it so, but what will you do in the end? What are you going to do in the end when you have to face the Lord and say, oh yeah, I was doing whirly dervish stuff in the church? <laughs> you got a problem, man, because the Lord's going to say, you know what? I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. I don't want the Lord to say that to me. I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Right. Um, uh, these folks in India uh, run into this high priest named Ramish, 
and he's actually a high priest of Shiva, and Shiva is the top of the food chain of about three million gods last count, or whatever it is now in, in, the, in the Hindu religion. Um, and the, Ramesh was really getting, the guy was playing a very general praise song, freedom, and, and the guitarist spiel was, well, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You know, so they're going through, and Ramesh was hip with this, and they were going through is. the streets, and he, they, they were allowed into temples, places where uh, Christians are for sure not allowed, and uh, let alone film crews. So Ramesh was taken in by the music, and plus they had a security detail with them as well. But you show me in scripture, folks, where the Holy Ghost has a sing-along with the high priest of Shiva. It doesn't happen. That's one spirit saying, hey, you okay? I'm okay. You know, it's, not I'm okay, you're it's not, not because it's all. not the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, with that verse, I've never liked that song because they ignored the second part of the verse. It's all like, oh, it's all about freedom. We all have freedom, you know. But you know what? There are responsibilities with that freedom that come. You're not just free to do anything you want to do. That's license for immorality. And we have got a lot of people who are basically teaching that today. And it was really telling because around the 12-minute mark, they uh, go to the guitarist and he's just, you know, praising his Holy Spirit ab about where they had access to and all that. But um, the thing that was disturbing to me, and we're going to show that clip right now, is what he states that he was saying that we are not trying to convert anybody. Mm. And... <laughs> Uh, all th everybody's saying we need to return to the book of Acts, and we do need to return to the book of Acts. Um, after Pentecost, uh, Peter went out and preached. He didn't slay people in the spirit, you know. Stephen preached for a whole chapter in Acts, and then he was martyred for preaching the gospel. That's what's sorely lacking um, in, in this. And so let's go ahead and show that clip with the guitar player saying we're not trying to convert anyone. How do you describe the head priest of the temple of Shiva on the Ganges River, singing, declaring, free, just eating, just eating his thing, being like, freedom, freedom, yeah, you, yeah freedom. And he's just, he's just getting it right there, just loving it. And we're just, God, come and bring freedom to this place. That's all we want. We're not trying to sit here and convert thousands of people because the truth, when the truth we know where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And so he's like, let's take this thing to the streets. Okay, Ramesh, let's hit the streets. This idea of, well, we don't need to preach the gospel, is basically comes from Don Richardson's books, etc. And it's a very convenient thing, because now you don't have to do anything. You just go party with people, and, you know, and oh, we're all, have, we're all in the Spirit. No, you're not. You're not in the same Spirit at all. Oh, but, but the true knowledge of God went out from Babel all over the world. And everyone's always, all these cultures is, have, were created by God. And they're, they're all worship, worshiping God. And all you have to do is go back and find your supreme being and you're worshiping the true God. No, you're not. In Zechariah, it says, when the Lord comes, there will be one Lord and one name. His name, the only name. There are so many names today. But these guys are, are, are basically trying to acknowledge, oh, you guys are all in the same spirit. No, they're not. Well, they actually might be in the same spirit. They're not in the Holy Spirit. Right. That's the problem. And it's interesting that they, they feel such a, a connection to people who are absolutely not with the Lord. There must be something wrong with that. And the, the other interesting part is they really don't like people <laughs> who see something wrong with what's going on. And so there's no connection with the spirit there. So there's something really wrong going on. And uh, just to warn you, they are doing a part two of this movie called Holy Ghost Reborn. And uh, I would believe that's an accurate statement because they're actually rewriting scripture, rewriting the Holy Spirit. It's a different thing. And it shows a clip from that, I believe, the, uh, a little uh, blurb. And it shows Todd White just walking through crowds and just touching people. Okay. I'm gonna go through and touch as many people as I can. If I get punched in the face, it's okay. Jesus. 
God, thank you. Bless them. Jesus, get them. God, thank you. It's your presence, God. In Jesus' name. Get them all, God. Jesus. Oh, no. Can I go through here? Please? There you go. Good. Jesus. Bless them, God. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Bless them. God, thank you. Let me pray for you. Will you let me say something on there? Can I say something on there? Can I use this? Speak real quick. Yeah, can I do it? Come on, man, let me see. Jesus loves everybody here. You guys, Jesus! Everybody say this with me, ready? Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm gonna show a clip from Bethel of a girl uh, who shared, who, who said she bought down the manifestation of God, didn't share the gospel with somebody, but believed he was saved. We're going to show that uh, clip in just a second. But he, and then he grabs this bullhorn from a guy and he just starts yelling out the name Jesus. But the, again, the thing that's mi missing with all these groups, with all these folks, is they're not preaching the gospel. No, and you have to... You have to understand your position before God. You have to understand that you're an absolute sinner by nature and by choice and that you are on your way to judgment. And there's no way for you to get to God. There's no way for you to have a relationship with God unless you come through his son. And then you become a, a child of God. You're not a child of God until you come through the son. Jesus Christ is the only way and we are exclusivists. Because Jesus was an exclusivist. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. There's only one name under heaven by which men may be saved. It's not Shiva. It's not, you know, Allah. It's not Eo here from, from Hawaii. It's not Amanu Nakanushi. It's, not, it's none of those names. There's one name. It's called I am. I am that I am. And Jesus and Jesus Christ, Yeshua. So... We have to understand that there, there's other stuff going on today that is much more new age, has much more to do with the new age than it has to do with Christianity. Right. And I would, uh, in, in conclusion, I would encourage you to check out what we say with Scripture and to see if it's true. And if it's not, reject it. But I, I'd also appeal to, uh, uh, we're, we're doing this film in, in several uh, separate segments Watch Johanna Michelson's testimony that we had filmed uh, on an earlier film that we had filmed. Uh, it was uh, uh, concerning the emergent church yes. uh, hitting into the Nazarene denomination, which it's pretty much taken over in there. But um, Johanna's testimony, she was a, a saved Christian and she got involved with this. So I'm begging you people that are yeah. Bethel followers and, and those are, that are mixed up in this, watch Johanna Michelson's testimony on this and she found out later, she prayed that prayer that you, Sandy, you talked about, God, if this is really you, show me. That's just, uh, uh, we would appeal to you, just be humble and, and say, God, if this is really you, uh, show me the truth. Um, I, I'd ask you to watch that testimony and uh, Lord bless you and keep you. And again, uh, uh, we pray for these folks that, uh, Brian, I, I just, Welch, I, I just, I pray you'll, you folks that are involved with this will repent of this, as well as Darren, the director in, the, uh, in this, and, and uh, come back to the truth, the, the spirit of truth, not the spirit That's of error. Right. One of the most like ridiculous, like spooky church <laughs> story I have from the hospital is I was taking care of a man who was unconscious and he was dying and I had no way of communicating with him. I didn't know if he was saved. I didn't know anything really. And I was in the room and his heart rate just started to drop really fast. And I was just like, Jesus, I don't even know if he knows you. Like, what, what do I do in this situation? And I just heard him say, if you forgive his sins, he'll be forgiven. <laughs> And I'm like, am I allowed to do this? I don't really know about this. But so I just started to intercede for him and just release God's presence over him. Just tell him, like, your sins have been forgiven. The Father is going to just meet you today. You can enter into God's kingdom tonight. And within a few minutes, he passed away. And I'm like, you know what? This is amazing. I can't believe I have the, 
the, I don't know, it's just God has put you in places where he gives you so much responsibility and so much authority to carry out what he wants to do. It's like you never know who you're going to meet in the last second of their life to bring people into God's kingdom.